Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and welcome to episode 3 of uh, the YouTube Shop Student. So in the last episode, um, you know, I attempted to uh, align centers uh, using a test bar method and uh, there are a few things that I want to talk about that and it's uh, uh, just worth, worth a few things worth bear mentioning here. First, I think that there were a few people um, who didn't quite understand that method. So um, I just want to take just a second and explain what, uh, what it was we were trying to do. So one method of aligning your tailstock centers is that you put a, uh, mount a, a piece between centers and you turn it for its full length. And uh, then you measure the tailstock in and the headstock in and then the, you know, if they're the exact same measurement, you're not turning a taper. If they are off, either the tailstock is shifted too far forward toward the operator or too far back um, away from the operator and causing the machine to turn a taper. Now, if this side is smaller, that means that the uh, tailstock is too far forward, and if it's larger, it's too far back. So I think what we do is we split, uh, you know, split the difference. And uh, and set it and take another test cut, and uh, we do that over and over and over until the uh, bar is um, the same size all the way up and down, showing no taper or very very little taper. So that's where the principle lies. Except the only difference is we turned uh, or I turned one small section here. <coughs> excuse me, uh, one small section here uh, at the tailstock, flipped it around, measured it at the headstock and uh, set it uh, set my indicator to zero, turn the bar around without making any further adjustments to the compound or cross slide, brought the saddle down, rested the um, indicator against the same turned area at the tailstock to note the difference. And then from there, you know you would uh, adjust the um, adjust the tailstock set over until until you got zero. Now, as a preliminary adjustment, I use the the razor or the ruler method, where you know I've inserted a a, a ruler, or in my case, a, a razor, uh, between the centers and had the centers pushed against them. And depending on how that deflects, lets me know that um, how close I am for those centers being lined up. And it's just an eyeball method to get you close. I just happen to get really lucky because even after the last video. You know, I, I measured it two or three times, and it was it was pretty spot on, up to about a half a thousandth, and a half a thousandth over 12 inches. Hey, for a newbie like me, that's good enough, brother. Um, but now I do have um, some other things I want to talk about uh, this lathe uh, in particular because I'm I'm having some finish issues and that sort of thing. I turned this uh, bar down to uh, 875. Um, uh, for its whole length, just for practice of turning, because the next thing that I want to do is uh, machine down the uh, back plate for the four jaw chuck. Uh, but like I said, I have some uh, finish issues, and let me get the camera set up and I'll show you what those are. Okay, as I turn the length of this bar, I notice this rhythmic marking here. And interestingly enough, if I were to measure between these two spots all along here, it's 125 thousandths, or pretty close, which happens to be the um, pitch of the lead screw of the lathe. Also, I can feel, I can feel it. Sort, I can feel this. This just feels kind of un, uh, you know, um, cyclic maybe. And uh, there are some, uh, there are some vibrations in the lathe. Okay. So, but before I get too worried about that. Um, there's a, a million things that can uh, impact surface finish on a on a small lathe like this. So let me uh, let me uh, get the camera in a, in another position here, and let's let's talk about some of the some of the things that might affect uh, the surface finish and why I'm probably getting the surface finish aside from uh, speeds, feeds, and and the tool that I'm using. Although that will affect it. So let me get the camera situated, and I'll be right back. The first thing to take note of is that my lathe is sitting on these cast iron legs and the legs are not fastened to the floor. And if you look at the floor here, and I'll try to pan, this is uh, where I'm working on my basement and you'll see there's concrete right there and then right abutted up next to it is a wooden floor. The concrete floor under this floor is 
uh, an inch and a half lower than the uh, finished concrete floor in the uh, other part of the basement. And to bring those to the same level, uh, furring strips were applied to the uh, to the concrete floor and three quarter inch tongue and groove ply um, was you know glued on top of that glued and screwed on top of that so there's some flex in this floor and moving around on the floor um, you know can cause the lathe to move so that's that's one thing additionally um, I have not leveled the lathe bed right and in a sense I don't know how much good it would to do to level it in this environment now this uh, this is not the final uh, home of this lathe this is just happened to be where I brought it home uh, when I got it because I really couldn't get it into my shop at the time and uh, started working on it and the video started coming out and kind of going from there so um, I have to uh, uh, have to be honest and let you know that the uh, lathe has not been leveled. Okay. Now I want to take you to a uh, uh, the other uh, the headstock end of the lathe and the and the uh, counter shaft and motor and show you something else. So we'll bring you right there. Okay. So uh, you know vibration in the lathe can be uh, caused by a lot of things. Okay. There's a lot of components here. You'll see the uh, the motor here uh, is floating. Uh, of course, you got two a uh, uh, two-speed pulley here on a shaft, and then you know, you, of course, you have the back gears and and the uh, spindle shaft, and you have the gears over here. So, I mean, that's a lot of things. If the gears, if you have a gear that's worn kind of funny, um, you know, because uh, these are not the gears that came with the lathe. Uh, well, some of them are, but you know, I've been uh, I've been slowly acquiring gears. Um, uh, for the lathe and, and I have them all now except for a 24 tooth um, gear um, although I do have a plastic 3d printed one but that is the subject of a different video now uh, we're going to try it out so there's a number of things that can cause vibration uh, in the uh, in the lathe it could be misalignment and, and everything else and the thing to do is uh, um, is to start at the beginning and make sure that the lathe is firmly mounted um, leveled uh, no twist in the bed and and then you can start looking at different areas but another another thing that I want to demonstrate here and I think you can see it note um, I'll move you here a little closer maybe I won't make you sick all right so let's take a close look at the drive pulley here as I, I'm gonna turn the machine on Maybe if I can find a switch. Oh, it's up here. You see that thing wobbles. Um, maybe it's, I, I can't tell if you can tell how much in the video from this angle, but let's move directly in front of it. And again, I apologize if I'm making you sick. So you see that that pulley is wobbling about. So I think that uh, there are a number of things that I can address on this lathe uh, to get a better cut. Now, for the curious, I'll move you over here again to the bar here. So I've cut this to uh, 875 um, for the whole distance. Uh, I'm off. Uh, you know, I do have a bit of a taper. It's kind of a weird taper, and uh, that is a question that I've addressed to a couple people who've uh, been very very helpful to me and suggested a number of things and but basically what I see is I have measurement A on the tailstock end measurement B which is slightly smaller than measurement A and then measurement C which is slightly larger than measurement A so it's like I have like I'm turning a, a a taper one way and then taper back another way um, and like I said I, I'm not uh, sure what could cause that other than you know I think that uh, perhaps some wear in the bed could cause it but I wouldn't think it'd be that drastic and the difference between those measurements are you know um, a thousandth of an inch or half a thousandth of an inch uh, over those six inch spaces and maybe I'm worried about nothing um, as far as speeds and feeds for my last one, um, I started out turning the bar at about 400 RPM or 418, whatever, 
whatever that section is on uh, on the uh, uh, belt number three on the uh, headstock and was using a braze carbide tool. Um, when I first started the tool was slightly above center. I stuck my razor blade um, uh, between the bar and the tool and adjusted the tool height until the blade was vertical to get me closer to center. Um, and then you know I bumped to the next speed which I think was um, 800 RPM or pretty close to it and uh, or 680 RPM or something I can't remember but anyway the next speed up and uh, you know the the carbide tool didn't fuss about that or anything like that and cut just fine and uh, and when I what I would do is I take a light cut for the length of the bar bring the tool back to the tailstock without changing the depth of cut I would uh, run another pass along the bar just to take like a spring pass and when I take the spring pass is when I get this funny finish not when I'm uh, when I'm taking a regular uh, depth of cut let's say of, of at least ten thousandths I'm not seeing that finish now it could be the fact that I'm using carbide and carbide likes a bite um, I do have some high speed steel and I want to you know I want to do some more practice and that sort of stuff uh, with that um, just to get through the the you know more of the learning learning process and uh, the suggestions that Art and uh, Jeremy have given me uh, have been very helpful in, in getting closer. Um, but now the next thing I want to do, uh, I'll continue um, when I get a little free time during the week to continue uh, making chips. And if you look down here, you can see I have uh, I've I've made some chips, guys. Look at that, huh? What do you think? The uh, old computer geek who's uh, never run a lathe uh, has, has uh, at least done that. So uh, the next video, the next uh, YouTube Shop student video, I want to um, machine the uh, the back plate of my four jaw chuck. Now, machining the back plate doesn't matter if the tailstock's in alignment or not, obviously, because well, it's not going to be used. Uh, but there are some measurements that uh, that I want to I want to take, and I want to cover those in the in the next. Uh, YouTube shop student video. Now I do want to say this, um, things that can affect um, you know the finish and uh, uh, taper and stuff like that are the conditions of your uh, centers. Now recall that uh, my tailstock in I was using a live center. I think uh, traditionally probably should use a dead center because there can be some run out in the, uh, in the live center. So if you're looking at really good looking for good tight uh, tolerances, precision tolerances, uh, might be a better way to set up that, uh, to set up the, uh, the test bar for when you're doing your center alignments. The other thing is uh, make sure that the uh, Morse taper sockets are clean uh, before you drive the uh, centers home. And uh, I did do that. Although my, um, my Morse taper sockets feel, uh, well, they don't feel rough, but they don't feel real good either. And, uh, I'm, I think, and I'd like to have some opinion here, I think uh, I would, um, is it worthwhile, let me ask the question this way, is it worthwhile to buy a finish Morse Taper 3 and a finish Morse Taper 2 hand reamer, right, and then by hand, very gently run it into the headstock and the tailstock tapers and give it a slight twist just to make sure that you don't have any lumps or bumps in there that you can just t very gently take out by hand um, because uh, like I said mine don't mine don't feel the best in the world I mean they were clean and whatnot and then finally uh, before I close on this video another thing that I probably should have done and did not was uh, give an ind indicate uh, you know a test indication on the front um, the front center or the headstock center to make sure that it was truly running concentric because I really don't know. And so you could see those things could throw things uh, out of adjustment and, and you know without knowing where you're supposed to be uh, before you start then you don't really know where you're at when you end up. So now as a student these are some of the lessons that I've learned and I'm hope that by sharing those that you know some other folks have you know that it will help other new people um, coming into this hobby. I can't say enough about the community uh, at large. Uh, they've been very, very helpful, have given lots of ideas, uh, corrected uh, some of um, my bad practice, or helping, or at least helping me correct some of my, my bad practice and that sort of thing. So I appreciate that. So look, we've been, uh, I've been yabbering here for a while.
Uh, I'm going to get the lathe uh, cleaned up from the chips and get some of the stuff put away and uh, get the indicators and stuff set up on the next video so I can uh, um, so I can start recording and and uh, taking some measurements and and fitting the uh, the four jaw back plate to the four jaw chuck. So thank you again for your patience. Thank you again for uh, watch, you know taking the time to watch. You know I I, I you know. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into these videos. People don't, uh, who don't make videos probably don't understand, but those content creators out there who are subscribed to uh, my, uh, my channel know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, I appreciate it. Uh, if this video is helpful or if you think that this might help somebody uh, who's getting started, uh, please consider liking the video or sharing it uh, or even subscribing to my channel. I'm uh, trying to get up there. We're getting close to uh, 500 subscribers. That's pretty exciting to me, and, and I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to uh, making more videos. So other than that, uh, be careful. Uh, be sure you wear protection when you're working around machinery, and uh, have a blessed day.